Hi guys and welcome back to my classics series. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favourite Victorian authors who I do talk a lot on my channel about but I've never done a video dedicated specifically to him and that is Thomas Hardy. I love his books, I love the settings of them, I love the characters and the way he delves into their lives and I'm going to be doing quite a few videos on his books. I've chosen six to talk about today and look Lots of you asked me where to start with Thomas Hardy and these are the six books that I started with and I think it was a really good place to start. I really liked the books that I read first and it's really made me love his books even more because I think I got into them reading a mixture of his most popular books and also some that aren't as popular anymore. So I'm going to be talking to you today about six of them and then in the future once I've read six more there'll be another one and so on. I also want to do an individual video on his poetry and on some of his short stories so lots of Thomas Hardy videos coming up but I'm very excited to get into today's and show you what I have been reading from Thomas Hardy in the past two years. So the first Thomas Hardy book that I ever read all the way back in summer 2016 was Tess of the D'Urbervilles. This remains one of my favourite of his books and one of my favourite books of all time and I would would say that it's probably in his top five most famous books. I actually watched a BBC miniseries version of this when I was about eight and so I went into it knowing some of the story, I knew parts of the plot and I knew the ending and I actually think that enhanced my experience reading it and I know I've spoken in previous videos about the fact that if you are a bit reluctant to read classics and sometimes it's really good to watch an adaptation and that's what I did and I'd actually really love to revisit the adaptation now that I have read the book and it is a book that I also studied. I did it as part of my A-level course and I loved studying it. It was such an interesting book to study from so many perspectives and to delve into the contextual information and the background behind it and why it was written and how the characters are affected by the time that they are living in. I can't mention Tessa the D'Urbervilles without mentioning the fact that it does talk about rape or something that can be considered consensual or non-consensual sex. It is pretty ambiguous so if that is something that you're concerned about then maybe miss reading this one because this is about a girl called Tess Derbyfield whose father is convinced that they are descended from the noble Derbyvilles and he tells Tess to go and claim heritage to a man who is a D'Urberville who lives in a neighbouring part of Wessex and that is where things really go downhill from Tess. She has a child out of wedlock. Things really don't go her way and there are parts of the book that seem more optimistic and other parts where things are really atrocious for Tess and it's the journey you go on with her that makes her so fascinating to read about. I loved this one because it is a tragedy but at the same time it's a human tragedy rather than sticking to conventional tragedy tropes that almost seem like tragic comedies in places like some of Shakespeare's plays I feel like this one really does look at the humanity behind tragic events and how one moment can change the whole of our lives. It's not one of his happiest books but nevertheless it is very good and such a brilliant read so I definitely recommend starting with this one if you have never read any Thomas Hardy. I think it's a great place to start and I'm really glad that I started with this book. After I read Tessa D'Urbervilles I decided to go for something a bit more light-hearted and I decided to read Under the Greenwood Tree. This is one of Thomas Hardy's first novels and you can definitely tell that he's not quite in his stride yet but nevertheless it is a fantastic book and I loved the light humour of it, how it's very easy going, very easy to read and I love the characters. Maybe in a different way than I did with the characters in Tess of the D'Urbervilles because the characters in here are very funny and I loved how it features characters who aren't typically heroes but at the same time are wonderful to read about and have stories that deserve to be told. It talks about a village choir and how one of the members of the choir 
start to romance with the village schoolmistress. And I would say that if you're looking for something that is really typical of Thomas Hardy, then maybe this isn't one of those books. It's definitely a Thomas Hardy book, you can definitely tell that, but in terms of the depth of it, I don't think it is that kind of book. But at the end of the day, it was such a lovely read and something that I feel like you've got to read it for yourself to find out how charming it is because it's not one that I can discuss huge themes or brilliant things that happened in it that really call out the standards of the day. It's definitely not that kind of book but it is still a worthy Thomas Hardy book and if you are looking for something to read that isn't as dark as some of his other novels then Under the Greenwood Tree is your book. It's really difficult to choose my favourite Thomas Hardy book that I've read so far but there is a definite contender and that is Far From The Madding Crowd. I love this book with all my heart. Again, it's one of my favourite books of all time, if not my favourite Thomas Hardy book. And there's just so much that I love about it and I just want to convince you to read it because you have got to find out for yourself what makes this book so, so phenomenal. It tells the story of Bastia Everdeen and her many suitors when she comes to inherit her uncle's farm. And she's an amazing character. I've talked a lot before about how she makes so many mistakes but that is what makes her so human and what really draws attention to Hardy's characterization, which is so spot on that you can recognize yourself in his characters, whether they're doing heroic acts or acts that you wouldn't do yourself. You can still understand their thought process and Bathsheba is a perfect example of this. There are points in the book where I wanted to shake her, but parts of the book as well when I wanted to hug her or wanted to cry out that she should do this or do that and I I felt like I lived the story alongside her. I actually always discuss this in relation to the most recent adaptation starring Kerry Mulligan and I love it and I watched it right after I read the book which really enhanced my experience and I really love Hardy's adaptations. A lot of them are adapted by David Nichols who wrote One Day and Us and lots of other books and he gets Hardy's writing so well that if you find an adaptation that is adapted by him then I would definitely recommend that you watch them. They're just out of this world and I loved how it brought to life the landscape of Wessex where Thomas Hardy sets his books and how you get the landscape as well as the characters and you also get that joviality which you get with some of the secondary characters in the book and it is just so wonderful. I read this during the spring which was definitely the right time of year to read it. I find that I love reading Thomas Hardy's books in spring and the autumn because I feel like life is alive at that point or in the autumn it's just coming to an end and it's the changing of the seasons that I think Hardy captures really well in his books. I could talk about Far From The Madding Crowd all day long but it's another book that you've just got to read for yourself and it's such a lovely story. There are very bad things that happen at some point of it, some things that you can't help but feel upset about but at the same time there are so many uplifting moments that I feel like it's not a tragedy Neither is it a comedy, it's somewhere in between and definitely fits into this category of realism. One of Thomas Hardy's more underrated works, but one that I really loved, was Two on a Tower. I read this last October and I went into it with pretty fresh eyes because I hadn't heard anyone else talk about it, I didn't have any expectations, but I came away pleasantly surprised and whilst it isn't considered one of his best works, and I would agree with that, you can definitely see how he got to a point where he was one of the the best writers of the age because there is that hint of what makes him so spectacular but at the same time it doesn't quite shine as much as his other books. It follows two characters, Lady Constantine and Swizzen St. Cleave, who are different ages. Lady Constantine is older than him, she has been deserted by her husband but they start a relationship and this is frowned upon because of the age gap and because of their social standing and because Swithin has this very bright future as an astronomer and they are both very concerned in the book with astronomy. They go stargazing and look at the planets from an observatory on Lady Constantine's land. And I loved their relationship. I loved Swithin, how he was quite naive, quite innocent. And Lady Constantine was painted as this 
baby snatcher or cradle snatcher, is that the word? I didn't want that to be the case. I didn't want society to perceive them in that way, but that was just how it was. And it is quite tragic in places. It's definitely got that very tragic ending. I was a little bit unsatisfied with the ending. I must admit, it's not my favorite of his endings. Some of Thomas Hardy's endings are really impactful, like Tessa Derville's and Far From the Magic Crowd, and others, just fall a bit flat for me and this was one of those but the rest of the book was absolutely amazing and it's just a book that I think everybody should read and I feel like if you've read a lot of Thomas Hardy but haven't read this one yet then you definitely should. It's very moving and it really does point out the hypocrisy of the day, the double standards, what was wrong with Victorian society and this very questionable morality, things like this were going on and people were judged for these reasons and that's why I love it because I loved reading about that. At the start of this year, I read a Thomas Hardy book that I was so excited about and I was actually quite nervous because I'd placed such high expectations on loving it. And I'm very pleased to report that I really did love it. And again, I think it's one of my favourites, probably because it is quite similar to Far From The Madding Crowd. And I just love that book. And now I love this book. And it is The Woodlanders. This is about a small parish who live and work in the woods. And it's about a girl called Grace who has been away at school and then comes back to this very small community and it's about her adjusting. And like Bathsheba in Far From The Madden Crowd, she makes very many mistakes and she makes lots of wrong decisions. But again, I could really see why she was doing that and it made her all the more human. My favourite character in The Woodlanders, however, is Giles. I loved him. I just thought he was wonderful. There are other characters that I really hated and like Sergeant Troy in Far From The Mad In Crowd, we have a similar character in The Woodlanders. In fact, I think it's very easy to link Far From The Mad In Crowd to The Woodlanders. They are very similar stories, but set in very different places and there are different things going on. But like in Tesla D'Urbervilles, it also concerns itself with family and the expectations that family places on us. So I feel like if you got Far From The Mad In Crowd and then you mix that with some of the lighter parts of Tesla D'Urbervilles, you would have the woodlanders. I have to admit that I did cry my eyes out at this book. It had such an emotional ending and I was so attached to the characters that I just bawled like a baby and I have no regrets. I'd love to reread it at some point in the future, if not soon. And I just, I just love this book with all my heart and I just feel like rereading it right now. I'm gonna stop this video and go and reread it because that's how much I love it. And then the most recent Thomas Hardy book I read is not one that I loved, which is very unfortunate, but still very good, just not up to his usual standards. And that was The Trumpet Major. This is set during the Napoleonic Wars. And I really loved reading about that and how it affected the people living on the coast of Wessex. I haven't read a lot set during the Napoleonic era, so it was good to read about but I didn't feel like it had the depth and I didn't feel like the decisions the characters made in the book were very natural or I didn't feel like they really linked with the story that was being told. I really hated the ending too. This is another one where the ending was so disappointing. The main character Anne just didn't make the right decision. There's like a love square going on in this book. I feel like Thomas Hardy would fit in well with the 2008 YA scene in this book. It's very love heavy and not in a way that I felt like he was trying to send a message to his audience or trying to comment on something. I felt like it was just for the sake of the book and for me that just didn't make it very enjoyable which was a shame. I liked Anne, the main character, but I didn't love her. In fact I liked some of the other characters more who weren't very nice, like Festus who I thought was a very well-rounded character and had a lot of depth because he was a villain but at the same time a questionable villain and that's what I like about Thomas Hardy's books. So there were hints again of him being perfect but at the same time there was a lot lacking in The Trumpet Major for me so I wouldn't recommend starting here. I loved it but I just didn't love it as much as his other books so I came down quite hard on it but I still gave it four stars I think 
just because I love all of his books. I love being in this world, but I kind of judge his books in relation to each other now rather than in relation to all the other books I've read because I love them, but that doesn't mean that I love them all the same. So that was my video on Thomas Hardy. I would love to know in the comments if you've read any Thomas Hardy and I'd love to know the one that you love the most. Also, are there any that you think I should read next? I'd really love to read Judy Obscure and The Mayor of Casterbridge this year, but I'd like to fit in a few more over the next few months too. So let me know if there's something in particular you would recommend. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!